good day learners today we will be discussing about marginal rate of technical substitution and economic region of production after completion of this course you will be able to understand what is marginal rate of technical substitution what is diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution the relationship between marginal rate of technical substitution and marginal product isocons of perfect substitutes perfect complements and fixed proportion production and in the last we'll discuss about ridge line and economic region of production so let's begin this lecture now marginal rate of technical substitution this concept is very much similar to the marginal rate of substitution that we have discussed in demand by term marginal we mean additional now look to an isoquant let's see let's assume there is an isoquant between two factors of production capital and labor this is an isoquant and this is giving us an output of 100 now it is giving us different factors sorry different combinations of two factors and is yielding the same amount of output let's assume there is fact uh, combination a this is combination b and this is combination c so by marginal rate of technical substitution what we mean is the units of capital that will be sacrificed for attainment of additional unit of labor is marginal rate of technical substitution that is how the firm will substitute one input for another keeping the output constant now look to this table it is giving us combination of two factors labor and capital there are five combination a p c d and e and the output is constant as 100 now marginal rate of technical substitution of labor to capital by term labor to capital what we mean that the units of capital that will be sacrificed for attainment of additional unit of labor it is denoted as m r t s l k now if you look as we move from combination a to combination b the unit of capital is going down and the unit of labor is increasing so the change in capital is denoted as delta k is equal to 8 minus 4 8 minus 12 that is, is equal to minus 4 and change in labor that is delta L is equal to 2 minus 1 that is 1 so for moving from combination A to B we are supposed to reduce the four units of capital and the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor to capital is four thus the formula of marginal rate of technical substitution is equal to delta k upon delta l now if you look it is carrying a sign that is negative by negative sign we interpret that the slope of isoquant is downward sloping that is as the unit of one factor of production is increasing in this case the unit of labor is increasing the unit of capital is going down now the marginal rate of technical substitution in combination c is 5 minus 8 is equal to 3 and 3 minus 2 is equal to 1 in d it is 3 minus 5 2 is to 1 and in e it is 1 is to 
one. This is marginal rate of technical substitution. Now, we'll move to the principle of diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution. Now, if you look, we have used the same table that we have used before. Now, in this, the marginal rate of technical substitution initially is 4, then it is 3, then it is 2, then it is 1. So, as we are moving from one combination A to combination E, the units of capital that are compromised or sacrificed for attainment of one extra unit of labor is diminishing. That is, as the units of labor is increasing, the units of capital that is sacrificed for attainment of that labor keeps on decreasing. And this is known as principle of diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution. The rate at which the marginal rate of technical substitution diminishes is an indicator of how the two factors of production are substituted or the extent of substitution of two factors of production can be understood by the marginal rate of technical substitution. Now let's discuss different reasons for marginal rate of technical substitution. The first reason of marginal rate of technical substitution is scarcities of factor of production. By term scarcity of factor of production what we mean is please look into this uh, diagram. Initially there are 15 units of capital as we attain one extra unit of labor, the capital is going down by 5 and it is becoming 10. One additional unit of capital and sorry, one additional unit of labor and the capital becomes 6. So as we are increasing the units of uh, labor, the units of capital is going down and thus it is becoming less and less. So the producer in the later on combination will have less amount of capital and thus it becomes scarce in nature. So the willingness to sacrifice the additional unit of capital will start diminishing. The second is your no two factors of production are perfect substitutes. Now see capital and labor are two factors of production. Labors can do the work that is done by capital to an extent but they are not able to substitute them in totality. Same is the case with capital. Now since two factors of production are not perfect substitute then it becomes very much tough for a producer to compromise one factor of production for attainment of another factor of production and maintain the output. So the marginal rate of technical substitution keeps on diminishing. Now let's discuss the relationship between marginal rate of technical substitution and marginal product. Let's draw an isoquant. Let's assume this is an isoquant between two factors of production, capital and labor. And it is giving us an output of 100. There is one combination where the capital is K1 and the units of labor is L1. And there is another combination where capital is K2 and the units of labor is L2. Now look, if we are moving from K1 to K2, the, out, uh, the capital is decreasing. And if we are moving from L1 to L2, the labor or the number of units of labor is increasing. Now, this decrease in capital that is uh, denoted as delta K, will have an impact in output 2. 
now the marginal product of capital is equal to change in output upon change in units of capital since the capital is decreasing the output delta q will be equal to marginal product of capital into change in capital now this output will go down or it will decrease but we are also seeing that the units of labor is increasing let's say the additional unit of labor is equal to delta l so the marginal product of labor will be equal to delta q upon delta l thus change in output or addition in output is equal to marginal product of labor into change in units of labor change in units of labor now see this, since this is an isoquant this decrease in output because of capital will be compensated by increase in output that is happening because of increase in units of labor and thus it will maintain the total amount of output or it will keep the total amount of output as constant so let's take this as equation 1 and this as equation 2 now we can see that since the output is constant so change in output because of capital will be equal to change in output because of labor thus marginal product of capital into change in capital will be equal to marginal product of labor into change in units of labor now let's discuss isocons of perfect substitutes perfect substitutes are those factors of production that can be used interchangeably and will affect the output in the similar manner now let's draw an isoquant now if you look we are drawing an isoquant with two factors of production a and b that are substitutes now since they are substitute then the producer won't have the problem in using any one of them let's say there are four combinations a b c d in combination a let's say the producer is using one unit of a and 10 units of b now in b he is using two units of a since he is adding one unit of a and these two factors are perfect substitutes of each other he will compromise one unit of b in combination c he is adding one extra unit of a and he is compromising one extra unit of b here in d he is adding one extra unit of a and he is compromising one extra unit of b so marginal rate of technical substitution in this case if you look is 1 is to 1 1 is to 1 1 is to 1 that is it is constant so since, ma since marginal rate of technical substitution is constant that means the isoquant will be a straight line this is b and this is a this is an isoquant of a perfect substitute it is a straight line where marginal rate of technical substitution is constant now let's discuss an isoquant of perfect complements now perfect complements are those that are 
used in a specific proportion. For example, let's say a car manufacturer requires five tires and one body of the car for making a car. So one car is equal to five tires and one main body of the car. So if the producer has 10 tires but has only one main body then also he, is, he will be able to produce one car and if he has two extra metal bodies of the car but only five tires then also he will be able to produce one car that is the ratio between the tires and the body of the car is 5 is to 1 and the output is only possible in this given fixed proportion. Let's draw an isoquant. Let's say this is combination A with 5 is to 1. Now, if the form is increasing the units of tire, the output is going to remain same, that is 1. And if the body is increased without increasing the amount of tires, again it will yield to nothing and the output is going to remain same. And they have a right angle isocons where the production is possible only at the point of kingness. Now let's discuss isocons with fixed proportion production proportion. See the isocons that we have seen before were two examples of perfect and complements and the isocons that you see generally are smooth isocons where the factors are divided are divisible into smaller smaller units but in reality the there are only finite fixed proportions where the unit of labor and capital can work for producing a given amount of output this is one such table now if you look there is combination a b c d and e and assume that these are the only five combinations that are possible now let's draw an isoquant for this scenario The first is one unit of labor and 15 units of capital. So this is first situation. The second one is two units of labor and 10 units of capital. The third one is three units of labor and six units of capital. Let's take only these three situations. Now, this is an isoquant that is kinged at the points where the combinations are possible. The isocons that we see generally are smooth isocons where all the combinations are possible. This is a kinged isocon where the kingness is at the point where the combinations that are feasible are depicted. Now after understanding the concepts of different types of isocons and marginal rate of technical substitution let's move towards economic region of production now see for a producer it is very much important to identify the ranges in production function where it is economical for them to produce a given amount of output let's say this is an isoquant between capital and labor and this is an isoquant ic one now see the output no doubt in this isoquant is constant 
but if we look and take into account let's say this point is a at this point the capital is k1 and the, let's assume the labor is l1 now as we move to this point in an isocon the I output is no doubt constant but if you look the units of labor and the units of capital both are increasing that is at this point the marginal product of labor is equal to zero and after that it is becoming negative that means we require additional units of labor to compensate for the work of the labors now that means the producer will have to hire higher amount of labor and higher amount of capital to produce a given amount of output now this is ineconomical and same is the case here let's assume this is the point at this hypothetically the capital is k2 and the labor is l2 let's move to this point we see that at this point the capital is increasing so is the labor so after this point the marginal product of capital becomes negative and at this point the marginal product of capital is zero so this point and these point are known as ridges now let's draw an isoquant map which will have other isoquants now this is isoquant IC2 this is IC3 and this is IC4 now this point where the tangent is parallel to y axis this point this point here this point where the tangent is parallel to x axis this point where the tangent is parallel to x axis and this point where the tangent is parallel to x axis if we connect all these points we'll get a ridge line so the line that is above is known as upper ridge line and the line that is below is known as lower ridge line. Now using this particular figure we can see that at point A, B, C and D in upper ridge line the marginal product is zero and after that the marginal product of capital will become negative and in point E, F, G and H the marginal product of labor is zero and after it the marginal product of labor will become negative these two ridge lines upper ridge line and lower ridge line gives us the economic region of production that is the region where the marginal product of labor and capital is positive and it is economical for a producer to work in this region only so a producer who is willing to work in economic region of production will work between these two ridge lines and the region between them is known as economic region of production that is all about this topic of marginal rate of technical substitution and economic region of production. Thank you.